Everywhere you look on Tuesday's Daily Fantasy Baseball slate, you've got upside, both at pitchers and at stacks. And I feel like that's true, not just within those individual categories, but also within the salary tiers within those categories. you got ways you can spend up a pitcher. You've got a couple mid-slash-lower salary guys with good upside. And the stacks are also the same way, where you can find under-salaried batters or some studs to splurge on. So I think it's a pretty fun slate with kind of whatever you're looking for, you should be able to find for tonight. And no matter where you want to go, you should be able to find guys with a path to a big game. So let's dive on in and get you set for Tuesday night's slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down this 13 game main slate. The lock set for 7 5 p.m. Eastern for tonight. The one weather note for this slate is at Coors Field. There is a legitimate chance of rain at Coors. For the Rockies and the White Sox. I'm not really sure my best read on this game right now. It looks like the rain odds are around 25%, but it does seem like it's, you know, more likely that it happens at some point. So not really sure what the read is there. I always listen to Kevin Roth of Roto Grinders to see what his read on weather is because he's an actual meteorologist and I'm not. Uh, but check back on the weather at Coors Field later on to make sure that game between the White Sox and the Rockies will play. We'll break down that plus the top pitchers. For tonight in just one second, but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up later on today, we have our PGA DFS breakdown of the Rocket Mortgage Classic. That is this weekend, letting you know our favorite golfers in each salary tier, roster construction, and so much more. That in addition to USC and NASCAR podcasts every week and NFL just around the corner. So just search for the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Also, FanDuel's World Fantasy Baseball Championship for 2022 is coming up this September, and there are still chances to get yourself qualified. This year's live final will be in Chicago in September. The live final features $2 million in total prizes with half a million dollars going to first place. To get yourself entered into a qualifier, go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app. Eligibility restrictions apply. If you want more details on the Chicago trip, think FanDuel.com slash WFBC is the URL there. I'm pretty sure I'll be there this year again uh, to MC the actual live final. I think they're doing an event on Saturday, too, for uh, sports betting and stuff like that. So Chicago in September. Can't beat that. Always a good place to be for sure. Hopefully, I will see all of you there. Let's dive into the pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate where we see Shane McClanahan deservedly at the top in salary, checking in at $11,600. Carlos Rodon is 10 8. Aaron Nola checks in at $10,600. Frankie Monthos is 98. Luis Garcia facing Frankie Monthos is 95. Taiwan Walker stays in the Yankees at 94. We have Spencer Strider at 91. And Josiah Gray revenge game against the Dodgers at 9,000. Jose Barrios, Jordan Montgomery, George Kirby, Mike Clevenger, and Josh Winkowski are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, there are plenty of quality pitchers on this slate. But I'll have a hard time putting any of those guys above Shane McClanahan. He's sick, and I think he could go bananas tonight. McClanahan's facing the Orioles. It is a divisional game, but he actually has not faced the Orioles since the start of the year. His first start this year was against them. He has not seen them since. So no familiarity issues here between McClanahan and the Orioles. McClanahan has obviously been good all year. He started the All-Star game. Like, can't do that without uh, some tremendous output. But... He's hit a new level recently. In his past eight starts, he's throwing more changeups. And it's a pretty sick pitch for him because it combines a 46% whiff rate, which is second for him behind his slider. But the X Woba against it is 165 per baseball savant. That is the best pitch for him. So using it more is good. And it's led to sick peripherals. The strikeouts for him are in line with where they were earlier. The strikeouts have been there all year. The key thing I think has been fun for McClanahan in this stretch is his 27% hard hit rate allowed. That is a tremendous number. And when you add that to his strikeout marks, you get a superstar. McClanahan is exactly that. He has at least six strikeouts in all eight of those starts. He's hit double digits twice. He's had a quality start. You get the points for that on FanDuel as well in all eight starts. You know, I think that uh, he's just a really good pitcher, and we should probably just accept that. I think people have given the salary, but it, he's worth it is what I'm trying to say. 
Orioles have a 24% strikeout rate against lefties in their current active roster. So I have McClanahan projected for 8.7 strikeouts for tonight. That is about 0.6 strikeouts above everybody else. Top mark on the slate by a wide margin. I will be aggressive in using McClanahan as my top guy for tonight. I mentioned last night that I could use Aaron Ashby as like a uh, single entry kind of guy, you know, willing to deviate there. For tonight, I say go with the stud. Go McClanahan as your top stud for a single entry lineup because he's worth that. He has difference making upside. And hopefully some uh, shinier names lower in salary may detract from McClanahan's roster rate. There are a lot of contenders for the second slot, and I could have realistically put five separate guys here, listed them all out myself and tried to rank them. But my favorite of those options is Spencer Strider, who is just $9,100. A bit surprising to me how low he was. I just love his upside here. He's facing the Phillies, and that's still not a great offense without Bryce Harper. Their active roster has a 93 WRC plus against righties. They can still hit for some power, but... Their plate discipline numbers are pretty rough. They have a 23% strikeout rate with an 8% walk rate, which means we can use pitchers who are facing them. That's especially true when it's a pitcher as good as Spencer Strider. He's up to 10 starts now, and in those 10 starts, Strider has a 2.64 skill interactive ERA with a 37% strikeout rate. He's had good batted ball data as well. So yes, there have been some rough starts in there. He has let up five plus runs in three of those 10 starts. So that's not a great rate, but he has huge upside. He has hit double digit strikeouts in 30% of his starts this year, which is absurd. So from a, a skills perspective and other stuff, he, he's not similar to like old school Robbie Ray, but from a distribution of outcomes perspective, I think he kind of is where he could get you 10 strikeouts, but he could also let up 10 runs or maybe he'll do both at the same time. I'm fine with that because it means he has really good upside. And I've got other options I can go to for cash games for tonight. I just want to go with the tournament-based approach, and Strider grades out well there. He is projected for 8.1 strikeouts. That is second behind the Clanahan. So I will be there myself and put Strider number two, take that discount to 91, and put him number two behind just McClanahan for tonight. Among the value plays, Jose Barrios is the best for me and... I think this should be pretty obvious if you kind of know what's going on here for today. Part of it is Barrios, the improvements he has shown recently, but a big part of it is how depleted this Cardinals lineup is. They won't have Paul Goldschmidt or Nolan Arenado for today. And when you take those two guys out of the equation, this Cardinals offense becomes radically different. Different. Their active roster WRC plus against righties dips down to 90. I believe it's 115 if you put those two guys on it. So a massive deviation. Their ISO falls down to 123. They have a 22% strikeout rate. So they go from being a very respectable offense to an outright bad one when you take those two guys out. That's what Barrios will get for today, is that offense, that shell of an offense for the Cardinals. But like I said, he's been making his own improvements too. It's not just the matchup. He's been throwing more changeups across his past six starts, and that pitch can get some whiffs. His aggregate numbers in that time were not great because he had two bad starts at the beginning, but some upside there for sure. 13 strikeouts in one game, seven in another, six in one. It means he has single game upside. And the floor should be good given how depleted this Cardinals ro roster is. Brios does still have blowups. He can be kind of funky in that way. Even in this span with the higher change of usage, he, had, he got rocked by the Brewers and the White Sox. So it's not perfect by any means, but and I'm fine pivoting to Strider and McClanahan if you think Barrios gets too much steam due to the matchup, due to uh, the attention we'll get here at the Cardinals with no Goldschmidt or Arnato. But straight up, the, ve the best value play is Barrios. I would assume that Barrios will probably get a lot of attention for today, whereas uh, where Strider might not on the road. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to see as much attention there. The Braves are slight favorites, but not big favorites, whereas Barrios is. So from a tournament perspective, give me Strider over Barrios, but just straight up, if you want a bit, good value play, Barrios is that guy. I just will prefer Strider due to his easier path upside and likely the lower roster rate. So McClanahan one, Strider two, Barrios three for today. We'll talk about Aaron Nola in Things to Watch. First of all, let's go to stacks and talk about yesterday where I talked about the Giants being a great stack uh, against Tyler Gilbert. And then the lineups come out and Arizona's like, hey, we flipped our starters. So they had Merrill Kelly start last night and now are throwing Gilbert for today. I still love them as a stack against Gilbert and I'd rank them second on today's slate. 
But in case you listened yesterday, which I don't want to assume you did, um, I don't want to spend a full stack on them and just, you know, talk about the exact same things. So for new listeners, the Giants will rank second for me today. But be careful with the righties in the lineup who may leave early for a pinch hitter. Um, Austin Slater, the primary one there. Sometimes Darren Ruff. Just keep in mind that when you're stacking this Giants team, they are my number two stack. The number one stack is the Giants. Uh, or sorry, will be the Rockies at Coors Field. There is some threat of rain, so keep that in mind. But because we're talking effectively four stacks for today, I feel more okay putting them in here, even with the risk of rain being there. Let's talk about the Rockies facing Michael Kopech, and I like that matchup for them quite a bit. I've been talking about Michael Kopech's velocity quite a bit recently, where it had been down, but that bounced back his last time out. So that aspect is no longer a concern. But the issues for Kopech go beyond that. He's been using more sliders across his past 12 starts, and the velocity was fine for a lot of those, but he still has a 5.08 skill interactive ERA in those starts. He's walking a lot of guys, and the walks do limit balls in play, which is a bummer, especially at Coors Field, but he's letting up a 39% hard hit rate with a 53% fly ball rate. So the contact he does let up is loud, and that's good for us at Coors Field. We saw Kopech let up four home runs in one of those games. He let up two in another. His ERA in this 12-star stretch is 4.20, which is not bad given the competition that he faced, which is pretty stiff at times, but I don't think it's good enough for us to avoid stacking against him at Coors Field. I think the Rockies do enough to grade out well here, assuming that the rain allows them to play. So I will be high on the Rockies for tonight, specifically bumping up Charlie Blackman and Ryan McMahon because lefties uh they do strike out more against Kopech, but they get a ton of fly balls they get more hard contact so blackman and mcmahon get bumped up i think that um maybe a sam hillary gets in there you could use him he's not as enticing for me but bump up Mc- blackman bump up mcmahon um then get to the righties after that just to uh, react to the way that Kopech's uh platoon splits do break down Next, I'm going to go back to the Padres for tonight, even though it didn't really work last night. And again, this will be the third stack behind the Giants, who are second, uh, behind the Rockies, who are first. Padres are facing Garrett Hill, who is interesting, at least. He started this year down in double A. He had a 41% strikeout right there. Pretty dang good. Got himself a promotion to triple A. His strikeout right there is 29%. But it comes with a 12.6% swing and strike rate. That lets you start to question... If the Wiss will follow Hill to the majors, and that's especially true because it's his age 26 season, so he was much older than the guys he was facing down in double A. The first three starts for Hill in the majors have legitimized those concerns. He has a 12% strikeout rate with a 5% swing strike rate. So that part of his game did not transfer, but that was the biggest thing that he brought to the table. In AAA, the fly ball rate for Hill was 46%, and that's fine if you get a lot of strikeouts, but it's a lot tougher when you're facing big leaguers and letting up a lot of balls in play. That's why the expected ERA for Hill in his three starts in the majors is 5.30, and he hasn't faced the stiffest competition yet. The Padres are not that either, for sure, but just broadly, I think We've seen we can stack against Hill, and I've seen enough from the Padres to be okay with doing that here. So the Padres will be number three tonight behind the Rockies and the Giants, and I will go back to them for tonight. I know Luke Voigt, if you look at the overall numbers, not having the best year. He has a 410 slugging percentage, which is not ideal. He's striking out too much, but he's hitting the heck out of the ball right now. He had a ball go like 415 feet last night. That was not a home run. He has five barrels across his past six games. His barrel rate this year is up to 16.9%. He has double dong upside, and he's $3,100. So Voight will be a focus for me on this slate. I think that he deserves to be that based on the way he's hitting the ball right now, based on the matchup, stuff like that. Uh, So Luke Voight's low salary to big upside within this Padre stack for tonight. The Guardians' plans for tonight are pretty murky. It sounds like Brian Shaw will probably be an opener for a bullpen game with Kirk McCarty to be the bulk reliever. In that scenario, I would like the Red Sox, with a caveat coming in a bit. Shaw is a boost to his opposing hitters. McCarty would be that too. The Guardians actually put McCarty on waivers earlier on this month, and he was claimed by the Orioles. Then the Orioles put him on waivers, and the Guardians brought him right back. That typically doesn't happen with someone we need to avoid from a stacking perspective. 
McCarty in AAA with the Guardians has an 18% strikeout rate with an 8% walk rate. A lot of balls in play with a 42% fly ball rate. He did struggle as well in his one AAA star with the Orioles. So I don't know if it'll definitively be McCarty. I couldn't find confirmation of that on Twitter this morning, but it seems like it should be. So I'll rate the Red Sox here. Just be sure to circle back once Cleveland makes their plans more obvious. The one thing that could change this is the status of J.D. Martinez, because if he can't play, the Red Sox would be without him, Rafael Devers, and Trevor Story. That's pretty tough to overcome as probably the top three guys for stacking within this team. I do still like some of the other guys, like Jaron Duran is fun. Franchi Cordero can go deep. Rob Ruff Schneider has actually been hitting for some power this year, both against righties and lefties. So they might work for one-offs if Martinez sits, but I'd be much less inclined to stack them then. So if J.D. Martinez does not play, bump down the Red Sox. They'd be outside my top four. I put the White Sox at cores above them, potentially the Rays too. We'll talk about in a second, but... Um, if Martinez does go, then a Martinez, Duran, Bogarts, whatever you want to do, stack would work for sure. So just keep an eye on Martinez and react depending on his availability. Things to watch for tonight. Let's talk about Aaron Nola of the top guys that I did not discuss. I could see Nola being a good tourney play, really tough matchup with the Braves, and that'll help keep his popularity in check. He's also an underdog for tonight, but a lot of upside. The Braves are a high strikeout offense. I've got Nola projected for 7.7 strikeouts tonight, which ranks third behind McClanahan and Strider. So I'll give him a shot if I think he's going to go overlooked, especially with Barrios probably catching a lot of steam for tonight. I think that both Strider and Nola grayed out well as tournament pivots in addition to McClanahan being a tremendous play for tonight. I am unsure what to do with the Rays because they're facing Spencer Watkins. And since he came back from the majors or back to the majors, he's been doing a really good job of keeping hard contact in check. He's let up just a 33% hard hit rate across four starts with no homers allowed. He's still letting up a lot of fly balls, not getting a ton of strikeouts. So I think we can stack uh, this, this raise offense tonight, but the hard contact numbers have allowed some doubt to creep in to the point where I kept them outside my top four. If I had to push a team up above the Red Sox, should Martinez sit, it'd probably be the White Sox at Coors Field. Facing Armand Marquez there, but he's getting better, which is why I'm not as high on them as the Rockies or the Giants. And plus, offenses do tend to struggle. Their first game of the series at Coors Field, adjusting to altitude and stuff like that. But Marquez not perfect. They've got some fun guys in this team, so I'll be here. I just won't be as high on them as the Rockies or Giants. They're kind of in the same tier as the Padres and Red Sox, so even if Martinez does play, I could see putting them above them. Uh, but the improvements that Marquez has shown are the reason why I was a little bit lower on the White Sox for today. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for tonight. Um, Pierre, shout out to him on Twitter last night. He asked me for updated home run calls with the Giants, uh, with the Diamondback starter changing. And I, I said, Chaz McCormick, McCormick went deep. So thank you, Pierre. I appreciate that uh, keeping me or letting me uh, do the redo there with Wilmer Flores. But Wilmer Flores facing Tyler Gilbert for today. So We'll just translate that one over to here, and hopefully the McCormick good juju flies over into today as well. So Wilmer Flores back in the slot once again today as our fun home run call. For the boring one, I'll go Charlie Blackman. 15 home runs so far this year. Facing guy who lets up a lot of fly balls to lefties at Coors Field. I think that stacks up pretty well. So the home run calls for today, Charlie Blackman and Wilmer Flores. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, it's a high upside slate. A lot of guys in each department you can turn to. I think some fun uh, plays or tournaments where you could pivot from what will likely be the chalk. I like it. It's a fun kind of slate. Good slate for some single entry lineups uh, and multi-entry as well. If you have not, make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on all of your major podcast providers, PGA coming up later on today, USC, NASCAR, and then eventually NFL, all in the same place, too. Once you get subscribed, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.